from entitled man children to absolute lunatics. Here are the weirdest kings in history. If number two reminds you of your significant other, you may want to cut and run. Number 10. Sometimes too much of a good thing can literally end you. Zhou Hu Zhao inherited the throne of the Ming Dynasty in 1505 at the age of 14. But he was just a child. When I was 14, I was losing my mind over Britney Spears' music videos. I couldn't control my Woody Allen. There's no way I could have ran the freaking Ming Dynasty. So things go predictably horrible under Zhou's rule. He immediately decides to hand over control of his government to a group of eunuchs so he could devote himself to pleasure seeking. Makes sense. He had a harem of women so large that legend has it there wasn't enough food in the palace to feed them all. Zhou had a fleet of ships and loved taking bevies of ladies out into the open ocean because of the implication. In one of the more apropos turn of events in history, Zhou was overcome by an illness that he caught after his pleasure boat capsized. Some people just fly too close to the sun. Number nine. Back in 1742, Russia had a czar that was a literal man-child. Actually, a bit of a sad story. As a boy, Peter III was psychologically mistreated by a sadistic tutor, and this left him in a state of arrested development for the rest of his life. It'd basically be the plot if you mixed the movie Jack, starring Robin Williams, with the movie Sleepers. Both films, by the way, came out in 1996. How's that for a deep cut? So the Tsar, Peter III, is in a state of perpetual childhood, and he's forced to marry Catherine the Great. Rumor has it that he never consummated the marriage because instead of his wife, he was more content playing with his toy soldiers in bed. One story contends that when a house rat bit off the head of one of his toy soldiers, that he gave the rat an official court martial and a trial, and then hung the rodent from a tiny gallow that he constructed. Totally normal! Number 8. Next up is the real life inspiration for Dracula. Vlad III, who would eventually be known as Vlad the Impaler, was born on 1431 in what would later be known as Transylvania. That same year, his father was bestowed the name of Dracul. He was given the title by the Order of the Dragon, which was a group dedicated to the defeat of the Ottoman Empire. As his son, Vlad went by the name Draculia. As a boy, Vlad was captured by the Turks and kept captive throughout his childhood. When he finally returned home, he found that a usurper sat on his father's throne. And this is when Vlad earned his nickname. He invites hundreds of noblemen that were loyal to the usurper over for a nice seafood dinner. Once they're in the dining hall, his guards come out of nowhere and Vlad orders them to impale all of the noblemen on stakes. It was a real red wedding type situation. Over the rest of his life, Vlad really raised the stakes. Boom! The man loved impaling. Impaling was the best for Vlad. The estimates are that around 20,000 people were impaled during his reign. And if you didn't already think that this guy was twisted, on one occasion, he reportedly dined among hundreds of defeated warriors that had been impaled. Number seven. This next one is going to get a bit intense, so buckle up. Elagabalus, the emperor of Rome in 218 AD, was a categorical hedonist who delighted in watching the misery of others. Not a good combo. Here's a quick list of how Elagabalus indulged his schadenfreude. He let loose lions and leopards during a feast. He decided positions in the government based on the size of men's manhood. <laughs> He released poisonous snakes into the audience of the gladiator games and watched with glee as the crowd panicked. He threw gold and silver out of his window just to watch people fight over it. Finally, he chained servant women to chariots like there were horses and whipped them as they pulled him around town. And the King Joffrey Award officially goes to Elagabalus. Your Highness, you are truly the worst. Number six. Get Jamie Lannister here ASAP. We've got a mad king on our hands. Justin II was the ruler of the Byzantine Empire from 565 to 578 AD. And over that time, he was nuttier than Squirrel Boo Boo. Justin would try to bite people in his court and demanded that organ music be constantly playing to settle his nerves. I'm kind of into that second part, actually. Members of his court had a go-to move to calm him down. They'd pull him around the castle in a wagon with a throne on it. Apparently, this was a fairly effective way to assuage his anxiety. 
Oh snap, I just said the word of the day, assuage. Assuage means make an unpleasant feeling less intense. It can also mean satisfy your appetite. Words are fun. See if you can use assuage in a sentence in the comment section below, and we'll feature the person with the most creative phrase in our next video. If the wagon ride didn't work for Justin, the plan B was having metal bars installed on his windows to prevent him from jumping. Not exactly the steady hand that you want from a leader. Number five, Charles VI, the King of France, believed that he was made out of glass. That's not like a metaphor. This guy actually thought his body was made of glass. It's called glass delusion, and Charles would fade in and out of it. Some days he'd be outside running around his property. Others he'd sit for hours at a time, convinced that he'd shatter if he moved. At least he had plenty of time to devote to meditation. Glass half full. Number four, when it comes to gratuitous paranoia, nobody ruled like Nero, the emperor of Rome. Nero is best known for the fire that took place in Rome during his reign. The famous fire destroyed much of the city in the year 64. Popular legend holds that Nero fiddled while Rome burned. However, the fiddle hadn't yet been invented and Nero was 35 miles away from Rome at the time of the fire. When Nero came to power, he set about taking everyone who threatened or even just bothered him down. This included his wife and his mother. He was a next level narcissist and spent massive amounts of money on his personal pursuit of pleasure. Strange fact, one day, Nero sees a man on the street that he thought looked like his old wife. You know, the one that he whacked. And Nero decides to marry the man and forced him to dress up in his wife's clothes. Real rough deal for that random Roman dude. Also, Nero had a relationship with a servant in which Nero played the role of the wife. This guy was truly all over the board. Number three, Christian VII of Denmark became king at the age of 16 and he maintained that 16-year-old maturity for the rest of his life. When his dignitaries would bow to him, he was known for leapfrogging over them. This one's not so sinister, it's just hilarious. Number two, we've got a stage five clinger. Now we know this is a video about kings, but we're equal opportunity over here at Board Badger, and this queen is just too good not to include on our list. Joanna of Castile was the Queen of Castile and Aragon in Spain in the early 1500s. She started off her life normal enough. She married Philip, the first of Burgundy, who was the son of the Holy Roman Emperor. Joanna pumped out six children for Philip, all of whom went on to be emperors or queens. Things took a weird turn when Philip suddenly passed away in 1506. Joanna completely blew a gasket. She earned the title Juana La Loca shortly thereafter due to her refusal to be separated from Philip's lifeless body. She had Philip's body embalmed and kept it in her room, and she even traveled with it. Miss, your husband is too large to fit in the overhead compartments. You're gonna have to check him. Number one. On May 4th, 2019, the new Thai king, Vajra Longkhan, was crowned in Bangkok. His father was revered across the country, but Vajra Longkhan has an egregious reputation among the people of Thailand. But no one will voice any criticism of this despot as they could be punished with 15 years of prison. But I'm American, and we fought an entire war over our aversion to royalty and tyrannical rule. So let's really lay into him. <laughs> King Baj is known for his eccentricities. His fashion sense seems more fitting for a Phuket streetwalker than a king. As you can see in this picture, he has a real affinity for wearing revealing tops. Also, this man has no caboose. It's like his lower back connects directly to his upper legs. Ugh. Dom, next picture. This is creeping me. Ah, uh, much better. This guy threatened to have Facebook in Thailand shut down when footage of him shopping while wearing a yellow crop top leaked on the platform. He once appointed his dog Fufu, not making that name up, to a position as an air chief marshal. And when Fufu passed away, the king held a four day Buddhist ceremony for the animal. This guy is an all around hot mess. Unfortunately for the Thai people, it looks like they're in for the long haul. There's no way I could have ran the freaking Ming Dynasty. Uh, uh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing about half the time. <laughs> Based on the size of man's manhood. Manhood. Men's manhood. 
And over that time, he was nuttier than Squirrel Boo Boo. It's a poop joke. Do you get it? Nuttier because squirrels eat nuts. <laughs>